Well, again, thanks for joining us this evening and a Merry Christmas to you. I'm going to offer just a brief reflection on what we're celebrating uh, tonight. I won't talk long, but after I speak and and then pray, we will be singing Silent Night. And so if you have candles and want to gather them and light them as we sing that song, I invite you to prepare to do that. So let me just read a brief passage from Scripture. Revelation, I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Just verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, The words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I think most of us have had the very frustrating experience of wanting access to an account or a website, or a device that requires a password, but forgetting and not being able to find that password. And and the stress is heightened by those websites and those accounts that give you maybe three chances to try and guess your password until you're locked out even more. It is no fun being locked out. But that experience goes even deeper than forgotten passwords or or lost keys. We all want access. We want access to relationships of intimacy or influence. We want access to a person who will make us feel loved or appreciated, wanted. We want access to the room where it happens, to the inner ring. We want access not only to relationships, but to resources material, emotional, and spiritual. We want access to knowledge and skills and opportunity to all sorts of things that we think will make us happy, more fulfilled, and give us a more meaningful life. But often in all of that wanting, we find our, ox- our access blocked, and frustrated, And we feel trapped on the outside, looking in to the life that we think we need and want. But that experience of being locked out goes even deeper from a biblical perspective. Sin, our rejection and replacement of God, has locked us out. It has blocked our access to the fullness of life that comes from God himself. We have been locked out of the garden. We have lost our access to the life-giving reign and resources of heaven. So what do we do with that? That is a problem that Good, secure password storage cannot address. How do we have the access that we most need? Well, in our sermon series this Advent, we've been talking about phrases, titles from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah that the New Testament hears as anticipations, expectations of Jesus, of his birth, his life, and his death. We've talked about the wisdom from on high, and the root of Jesse, and the day spring, and the king of the nations. But there's another one of those titles in Isaiah 22, where the prophet talks about the key of David. I don't have time to explain all of the historical context of that passage, but I will say that that phrase, that image, the key of David, represents the possibility of access. Access to all of the promises that God had made to David and his descendants. And it was the promise of a 
unlocking all that we have lost. It was the promise of the coming of the kingdom of God, of heaven, the reign and resources of heaven being opened to earth, of humanity being restored to the fullness of life in the presence of God. Those were the expectations of the coming key of David. And then we hear Jesus talking to the church in Philadelphia, not Pennsylvania, but Asia Minor. And this church had been locked out. Because of their allegiance to Jesus, the religious, political, economic communities of their city had slammed the door in their faces. They had said, you do not belong here. They had been locked out and they were suffering greatly because of it. But in their suffering, as they find themselves on the outside looking in, what does Jesus say to them? Well, he says, I have the key of David. I am the key of David. I am the access that you most need. He goes on in that passage to say to them, even in your suffering, I have set before you An open door. And all the world, even your enemies, will know that I have loved you. And those words are for us tonight. Those words are for us. Who find ourselves trapped on the outside, looking in. And those words are for us because the birth we're celebrating tonight was the birth of an opening. Because Jesus was born on earth, heaven is no longer locked to us. The life-giving reign and resources of heaven are no longer closed off to us. And because Jesus died, the fullness of life in the presence of God is now opened to us. We are not on the outside looking in. Jesus came to open the door for us. So the question from this passage, from all the scripture we've heard from, from all the songs that we sing tonight, the question is, will you walk through the open door? Will you, by faith, walk through the open door into the never-ending love of God that is given to you in Christ Jesus? It is not that you will have all of the stuff that you want. It is not that your life will be free from pain and suffering. That wasn't true from the, from the church in Philadelphia. But it is that even in your loss, even in your pain and suffering, there is an expansiveness. The expansiveness of God's kingdom. His rule that has been opened to you through the birth, the life, and the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. So will you walk through the open door? What would it look like for you to live knowing that you're not on the outside looking in? but that Jesus has, had, has reached outside to you and has brought you into the love of God.
tomorrow we'll exchange gifts. And isn't it interesting that we don't just hand the gift to the person. No, we put it in a box and we wrap it in paper. Why? Why do we do that? Because there's something special. There is a delight in the opening. There is a delight in what is hidden being revealed. My hope, my prayer for you is that that delight will lead you to a deeper delight. The the delight of God's love revealed in His Son. The delight of all that has been opened to you through Jesus, who is the key of David. Let's pray. Father, would you bring us into that joy of knowing that even though we lost access to what we most need because of sin, you have not left us on the outside looking in. But you have sent to us an opening, a key key of David and Jesus. Would you help us to walk through that door? Would you expand our vision to know all that is ours through the coming of the key of David? And we pray all of these things In his name, amen. Let's sing Silent Night together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. All is bright round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in a heavenly peace. Sleep. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born, silent night, holy night, sun Hear now the words of the revelation to John given him in a vision. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever.